Hi, my name is Dave Case and I'm making this video to help the youth football coaches in the Hood River Valley use some of the same language that we use to identify alignment in our defensive linemen. Um, we use a numbering system at the high school that allows us to, to tell kids where to line up and um, also make game time adjustments a little bit easier. And it helps us uh, teach technique as well. It's a pretty simple system and it all starts from the center. So you can see here I've got a, a double tight end situation. Um, the blue guys here are offensive. So if, uh, if we're playing a nose guard, and my understanding is that up through sixth grade in our, in our youth league, you have to play a nose guard, we call that a zero because he's centered up on the center. Um, and we can shade him off a little bit and all that kind of thing, but you don't really need to think too much about that right now. Um, just for, our, for the purposes here, um, he is a zero. Okay, um, And from there, we just number our way out, and each offensive lineman has three techniques that you can play on him. So if you're playing inside shade of the guard, that means that um, if I were inside shade of the guard, my nose would be on his inside shoulder pad, then that's a one technique. If you're straight up on him, that's a two technique. And if you're outside shade of him, so nose on outside shoulder pad, then you're a three technique. And you can see this goes both ways. So a lot of the time at the high school, we'll have a three technique over here and a one technique over here, or vice versa. Um, and uh, this allows you to, to play to a strong side, a tight end side, an overloaded side, however you want to call that, okay? Um, we move on out on the tackle. The, an inside shade is a four, a straight up guy is a five, and an outside technique is a six. Again, that goes both ways. And if you've got a tight end, you have a seven is an inside shade, an eight is, is straight up on him, and a nine is an outside shade on that tight end. It's a pretty simple numbering system, but it allows us to, to do a lot of things. And I'll go on in just a second here and show you how I would do this if I were running a 5-3 or if I were running a 4-4, okay? Um, one thing that I would mention here is notice that the way we teach techniques is we align them with the man. So we never say, hey, I want you lining up in the, in the A gap, or I want you lining up in the B gap, okay? Um, if those are unfamiliar terms for you, um, Generally, uh, these are the A gaps between center and guard. These are the B gaps between guard and tackle. Um, and C gaps between tackle and tight end if there's a tight end. And you can even talk about a D gap out here. Okay? And yes, if we've got a one technique, he's pretty much an A, -ga a gap football player. But we don't tell kids to line up in that gap. And this one technique knows that if he is a one technique on a defensive lineman who is, or an offensive lineman who is right here, his first step is going to be to contact with that offensive lineman. So their alignment depends on, who, uh, uh, on the offensive lineman. And their alignment also tells them which step they're stepping with and where they should be striking at things. And this allows our linebackers to play off of that also. I think that's about all I need to say about the numbering system. I hope that's helpful. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do here is describe how I would run a 5-3 defense if it were me. I've never really run a 5-3. Um, and uh, please don't take any of this as telling you how to coach your football team. But this way I can tie in what I just taught you about the numbering system. And it would be really neat if kids came to the high school using kind of the same language that we use. So take what you want, uh, forget what you want, all that kind of thing. Um, right here I've drawn up the way that I would run a 5-3. Okay? Uh, so the offense right now is a you know, I right, old fashioned I right. And we, I understand that the rules in our youth league say that we have to have a nose, a middle linebacker, and a safety all straight up on the center in, in that same line there. So that's, that's what you got to do, I guess. Um, and this nose right now is a zero technique. Um, 
And then if it's a 5-3, probably you'd want to have two defensive tackles. And they're each in what I've drawn here, these are three techniques. And notice the way that I've done this on the board. Their technique is indi indicated by which half of a man they are, they are lined up on. And so we really want to make sure that those defensive tackles would step to um, the step to the blocker to that guard and engage that blocker. Their first step should be straight at that guy's crotch, basically. Um, and uh, Coach uh, Schlosser has made a defensive line technique video that should be on our YouTube page. So you should check that one out because it all makes sense when we look here. What I have, what I've drawn up here because they've got a tight right. Um, is they've uh, I've got a six technique with this end um, and a nine technique with this defensive end over here, and that's probably how I would run a, a uh, how I would run a five three at the youth level, just because you're more prone to getting hurt by toss by stuff outside than you are between the tackles. Um, one of the cool things about our numbering system is an in-game adjustment you could make is if you are getting beat up between the tackles, because you can see there's kind of a big old bubble, big old bubble right in here, okay, where they could hurt you, you could say to, that de to this uh, defensive end, or you'd probably have to tell them both because that tight end might move, you could say, hey, we don't want to play a nine technique anymore, let's move it into a seven. And all of a sudden that guy becomes a, a, a C-gap football player and um, you can leave your, your outside back or still outside of him to help deal with toss and stuff like that. So this is part of why the numbering system works for us. Um, the, uh, again, I've never run a 5-3 if it were me. Um, I'm assuming you're going to play a cover 3, which is what we play at the high school a lot of the time. And um, so our cornerbacks are generally, uh, I, I, most people play their corners about 7 yards off the line of scrimmage and one yard inside of the, of the number one receiver, the, the furthest outside receiver, okay? Um, and our safeties generally are somewhere between um, 10 and 12 yards downfield, um, 10 or 12 yards away from the football. Um, and I would think that'd be a good starting place for you. Um, we have, I, um, the way we name our linebackers is different because we don't run a 5-3, but uh, this would be a strong side linebacker, and I would assume that at the youth level you're not going to switch these guys dependent on strength. But um, I would line up the, the outside linebackers just outside uh, of where the defensive end is um, if he's in an outside technique, a 6 or a 9. So I'd have him get his inside foot perfectly in line with the outside foot of that defensive end in front of him. That would give him a chance to run the stuff outside, but still come in and help inside a little bit as well. Um, we call our strong side linebacker a Sam. We saw, call our, our middle linebacker a Mac. And we call our weak side inside linebacker a Will. Um, and so you might call that guy Will, or you might just call both these guys outside backers, or Oscar, or something cool like that that denotes their, their name. Um, the important thing I think is for us is if you start using our, our numbering system on the defensive line, that'll, that'll help to give kids the same mental framework that we're going to use. All right, okay, I know the younger kids have to play a 5-3, um, but I think that what I hear is the 7th and 8th grade coaches are, are going to run a 4-4. And again, I'm not the defensive coordinator, I'm the guy who knows how to work the camera and make videos, and so I'm the one making the video here. But uh, I can give you a pretty quick rundown on, on how we name things in our 4-4 defense and, and where people tend to align um, when they run 4-4 defenses, okay? Um, so in our 4-4 defense, um, we, have, uh, we uh, move our um, defensive tackles, which we call, we call the guy on the strong side a tackle and the guy on the, on the weak side a nose, but you can just call them both tackles. Um, uh, we move them based on the strong call, okay? So as soon as we break the huddle, our inside linebackers are coming out and our, our Mac backer is generally the guy that's in charge of the huddle and in charge of making as many of the calls as he can. And he's going to see that the tight end is over here and this means that we've got a strong left. 
and he says, left, 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 okay? And uh, um, that tells our um, tackle that he's going to be a three technique. We play at most four fours. What I'm telling you here isn't some sort of state secret among Eagle football. You can um, pretty much every four four in the country does something a lot like this. And um, that tells our tackle that he's going to be a three technique. So he's going to play to the strength call. That tells our nose he's going to play to the strength call also. And so a way you can teach this to younger kids is you're, if you're a defensive tackle or a nose, you're always lined up on that, on that guard. You just shift over. Um, half a man to the side that is the strength call that they're getting from their linebackers. Okay, um, our defensive ends. Um, this kind of goes back and forth. There's one little bit of controversy here, and um, some people, te uh, the generally the backside guy, the guy away from the strength call, is always going to be a six technique. Um, and some people play the strong side defensive end in a in a six, like I have them drawn here. And some people put them in a seven if there's a tight end, so move them out a little bit on that tight end. Um, uh, for, the, for the simplicity of, of teaching kids the, to play a certain way, if I were teaching, if I were coaching middle school football, I would certainly play those defensive ends at six techniques so they always know exactly where they're supposed to line up. That's one less variable on your defense. That's your call. Um, again, um, our corners are... Gonna, uh, our, we play a lot of cover three, we play some man out of this, we can do both things. Um, and we, uh, our, cover, our corners are seven by one. Um, you can adjust depending on, I don't know, how, how arm strength has, what arm strength has to do with that or anything like that. I'm sure you might want to adjust that. Um, our linebackers in a 4-4 four -four are a Sam on the strong side, and we switch these guys. Um, a Mac backer who is a strong side inside linebacker, a will backer who is um, weak side inside, that's what will stands for, I'm not sure what max stands for exactly, except that it starts with an M. And we've got what we call a rover, and for us sometimes we'll, we'll shift into a cover, into a 4-3, so this rover becomes a second safety on the football field. And so um, we generally want, um, uh, we have the safety and the rover kind of wait in the middle of the field until we get a strength call, and then the safety and the rover um, go to the appropriate side after that strength call because our, our sandbacker is more likely a little bit bigger kid um, and our rover is a little bit more fleet of foot. Um, so, and our safety, I know we've got two S's up here. Um, our, you could call him a free safety, but he's not really free here. Um, our safety is um, supposed to line up um, over the B gap, but um, unless they have some sort of uh, overloaded formation with a bunch of receivers on one side, a trips look or something like that, I think you'd probably be safe keeping them straight up over the center if you want to teach things the simple way. Um, so that's a 4-4 defense. Um, again, oh, and my name's Dave Case. I don't think I've said this through, that throughout this video. I teach at the high school. If you ever need any help with any of this stuff, I'd be happy to, to go over it with you. Our whole coaching staff would. We're just uh, thankful to have people willing to coach younger kids who are going to come up and play Eagle football. Thank you very much.